we see a man named Finch in a terrible storm at the start of the film. At that time, he had worn a UV suit. The robot informs him that UV radiations are at extreme levels. After that, Finch moves into a store, and we also see his robot named Dewey with him. Finch notices that there were many dead bodies in that store. Later, his robot begins to pick the things from there. Finch also discovers the dog's food there. Later, Finch moves away, sitting in his truck. There we see the site of the complete city where everything had been destroyed. And the condition of that place was worse. The temperature had increased because of the destruction of the ozone layer some time before and the people could not move outside because of UV radiation. Due to this, all the people died except a few. Later Finch observes a map, where he comes to know that he has taken food from everywhere. In spite of this, he moves forward to search for edible things. At the same time, he observes the storm approaching. He begins to leave the city from another route, but that storm is still after them. When Finch stops his dump truck at a place, then a storm breaks out there, then Finch and his robot Dewey move forward somehow. Later, Finch takes Dewey into his shelter, where he cleans himself and that robot with a blower. It is known here that Finch is severely sick, because he is suffering from tuberculosis. Here we come to know that it is an underground laboratory that was owned by the company he worked, before the cataclysm. Finch makes it his home. Later Finch meets his dog. It is seen here, that they have great affections for each other, Meanwhile Dewey comes, taking those things, which had been taken from the store by them. Finch makes his dog feed on it which he had taken from the store. After it, when Finch looks at his supplies, he comes to know that he has little food left. Finch inserts many books into a machine. That device starts extracting the information from the books after scanning one by one. It is observed here that Finch is actually building a robot. Later we see him reading a book at night. Then he knows that radiations have reached an extreme level. Finch is very grieved, seeing his dog. How will it face the situation after his death? Later, Finch is seen working in his laboratory. He also programmed all the information about radiations in the robot. Later, when he was assembling the robot, then he comes to know that. He needs cameras, then he fixes the camera into that new robot, removing them from Dewey. The data starts to shift in it as he turns on the robot. Finch wants to communicate with the robot. Then robot also begins to move. Finch checks his new robot and he gets extremely happy seeing it. He tells his dog, you are going to get your new buddy. Further, Finch works on that robot and he makes him know how to speak. So that robot starts to communicate gradually. Then Finch feels very happy when he notices it speaking. Later, Finch asks it, tell me something about you. Robot replies, Robots do not harm human beings. They would rather take care of human beings. It is noticed here that Finch's dog had not liked the new robot. Then that robot tells Finch, I have been designed as such that I should take care of human beings and animals. Finch says to it, my dog is very valuable for me. So you have to take care of it. Meanwhile, we see lights switched off at that place. Then Finch moves upstairs to check the anomaly and repairs a cable. After repairing it, lights get restored and the robot also gets initiated. At the same time, Finch observes that a storm is approaching outside. Due to it, lights had turned off. Later, when Finch comes to the robot, then the robot tells him a terrible storm is going to break out and that storm will approach us within 24 hours. We will not be able to save from it as it is going to prevail for 40 days. Hearing it, Finch understands that they have to leave that place. Finch starts thinking after taking a meal where he has to go further to avoid the storm. But his task was still incomplete, because he has to assemble the whole body of the robot. After this, he thinks to move to San Francisco. At the same time, Finch's mouth bleeds. As a result, he is saddened. After some time, Finch also manufactures the body of that robot. That robot is looking at its hands. Finch teaches that robot how to walk. Finch asks that robot to come after him as it starts walking. At first sight, that robot begins to walk perfectly. Consequently, Finch is extremely excited. When Finch's dog barks at it, that robot falls down. Later, Finch begins to pack the luggage to leave that place. And the robot was practicing walking and running on the upper floor. Finch asks Dewey to accompany them after packing the entire luggage. But Dewey has no camera so it was unable to view. As a result, it was unable to move properly. Later Finch takes a camera from a CCTV camera, 
and fixes it on Dewey. They leave that place by bus. Here we notice that the newly assembled robot is learning new things. It is also known here that their bus is safe from UV radiation. They head toward San Francisco where everything had been destroyed. The new humanoid robot has information about everything. It constantly guides them. After some time they stop in a city. There the new robot notices Finch's postcard. And it says to Finch, I have liked your postcard too much. Then Finch tells people were habitual to use the postcards to communicate in former times. Then that robot asks, who had sent you this postcard? Finch replies to it that it had been sent to him by his uncle. Later, Finch asks the robot to accompany him. Then he tells all rules and regulations to the robot when they were outside, where it had to search food for his dog and also make it feed. Meanwhile, they notice a cinema hall. Then Finch asks it to unlock the door of the cinema hall. Then that robot easily unlocks that door. After going inside, Finch asks it to search for food. For the first time that robot looks at itself through a mirror. Finch gets some of the food from there. So they both come outside. He adds some corn grains on an iron plate. Those popcorn pop because of the high temperature. So they both get very excited. At the same time they observe a storm approaching there. So they move out of that place, but that storm was still approaching them. Finch understands that they cannot avoid that storm. So he comes outside, wearing his UV suit. He starts to adjust the nails so as to make the bus firmly fixed and he also asks the robot to do as such. Three nails were fixed by Finch while one is fixed by the robot. He quickly moves onto the bus. Now we see the storm approaching there. Later the robot also enters the bus. They hang on in the bus due to the storm. Now their bus was surrounded by the storm. So it begins to float in the air. Due to it three nails were unfixed. But it was still stuck there. The bus comes to its place when the storm stops, and they all were safe and unharmed. After this incident, Finch and that robot come outside. Then Finch observes that all nails were unfixed except the one fixed by the robot. So he appreciates that robot. Now we see a tire damaged. When that robot comes to replace the tire then they realize that they do not have a jack to change the tire. Finch tells the robot that we cannot fix the tire without the jack. Here we see that robot lifting the bus, then it asks Finch to fix the tire. Then Finch fixes the tire easily. Finch says to the robot that it can become a good jack and suggests that its name should be Jack. That robot says, no, I should be named William Shakespeare. Finch says, no, it's a long name. Later, they select that robot's name as Jeff. The next day, Finch sleeps inside after placing the solar panels on the bus. Then that dog begins to bark and Jeff starts speaking as a result Finch wakes up. Then new robot Jeff tells him. I am learning the language of dogs and I think your dog dislikes me. Finch says those two should need some time to become friends. Later they leave that place. Now we see Jeff sitting beside Finch. They head towards the Golden Gate Bridge. Jeff asks Finch, what do you mean by trust? Finch was unable to explain to him. Finch tells his own story. He starts saying I used to work with some people a few years ago, but they all were less skilled and we all were working on a project, except for me, all believe the software problem could not be solved. But I fixed the bug in the software. Due to this work, my boss complimented me. Indeed, I had performed that task alone. But I told my head that we have mutually performed this task. In this way, I won the trust of everyone. It is the meaning of trust. In the same way, our trust is built on others. But Jeff could not understand it. Then Finch says, okay, I will tell you later after some thinking. Later they stop near a restaurant. Finch comes outside leaving his dog to Jeff. Finch vomits blood when he enters the restaurant. His condition was worsening day by day and this makes him very dejected. Finch comes to take his dog as he hears the barking sound of his dog. But Finch asks Jeff to get onto the bus. But Jeff wants to drive the bus. We see Finch and his dog communicating with each other in the restaurant. There he was training his dog to sit and stand, while Jeff was practicing driving outside. Finch runs outside when he observes it. At the same time, Jeff hits that bus with a vehicle. Because there was sunlight, Finch was unable to go near the bus. Later, Finch calls Jeff and asks, Were you driving? Then Jeff replies nervously, No, I am not driving. Afterwards, Jeff reverses the bus. When Finch shouts to stop, 
Jeff again hits the bus. Finch comes outside and checks his hand in the sunlight. Now he tells Jeff I and my dog cannot come in the sunlight. We will be burnt if we come there. Finch shows his anger on Jeff. Saying, I had only assigned one task to you which was to take care of the bus. And you did not perform it perfectly. Finch shows his aggression on it. As a result, Jeff feels bad. Later they move ahead, sitting on the bus. Then Finch allows Jeff to drive the bus. At the first sight, Jeff begins to drive perfectly. Finch was very excited because of his work. Later, Finch asks Jeff to drive the bus at 50 miles per hour. Then Jeff does the same and they move ahead. Then they stop at a place at night when the sky looked beautiful to them. Finch tells it, things have altered after the disappearance of the ozone layer. It often happens that the sky seems beautiful like this. Jeff asks him here, is there any danger at night? Why can't we travel in the daytime? Finch tells there is a reason for this. There is danger on the way. And this danger is from human beings. We may protect ourselves from UV radiation at night, but we still have the danger of human beings. And we should not trust any human being. Finch goes to sleep as he was coughing heavily. The next day, Jeff hears a sound. So he moves onto the bus. It observes Finch vomiting blood there. And he also looks very sick. Jeff asks him, what should I do to help you? Then Finch asks him to call the doctor. Later, Jeff checks his knowledge gained by the books. Then it places a wet cloth on the head of Finch. It takes care of Finch very much. Finch's dog was also observing its work. Now Finch's condition gradually starts to restore. Later they move from that place and stop at a mall. It notices that Finch was sleeping. So it takes Dewey and goes inside to search for food. They begin to gather some commodities inside the mall. On the other side, Finch wakes up on the bus. He was scared when he sees outside. There Jeff was collecting food items. Finch comes into the mall while wearing the UV suit. Dewey sees a pack of food. It falls down when it goes to pick it up. As a result, it gets damaged and later it gets stuck with an object. Hearing its sound, Finch comes there. He sees that Dewey is completely damaged, so Finch turns it off. Later, Finch hears a sound at that place. So he goes to that place for checking, there he finds Jeff. It tells I am collecting the commodities. Then Finch advises it that we cannot stay at this spot to collect the things and this place is not out of danger. So they both move away, getting on the bus. They notice a car following them. So Finch heads towards the city leaving that place. Later, Finch asks Jeff to drive the bus. He reminds it that they may be killed because of its mistake. In due course, Finch takes his gun. The car was still chasing them even in the night. As a result, they had no option to halt the bus. Then Finch asks Jeff to drive the bus at full speed so that they could move ahead of the car. They observe a bypass while they were moving ahead. Finch plans to hide the bus inside the bypass. Jeff advises Finch that the bus will not fit inside the underpass as its height was less. But Finch rejects Jeff's suggestion. Afterwards, they stop the vehicle at the same place. We notice Finch very frightened. Meanwhile, Jeff pushes the bus inside the bridge. We also see other car arriving there. Finch was perfectly ready to kill that man with his gun. But, he feels relaxed when he hears the sound of the departing car. Later Finch finds the damaged solar panels when he comes outside. Finch says to Jeff, I cannot repair it now. Nor we can go San Francisco. Then Jeff assures him that he will handle the whole situation. But Finch furiously replies you're just a machine and cannot understand anything. He gets into the bus by showing rage on Jeff. But we see Jeff outside in the shower as it was raining. Later Jeff comes to Finch and informs him that we can go to Golden Gate Bridge. Finch again tells one more story here. During the initial days of ozone destruction, people thought everything will be all right soon. So they started to dwell in their homes without any stress. But there were some people who were pessimistic. So they were collecting essentials wisely. I was also one among them. When I was collecting the commodities from a supermarket, I discovered a little girl who was along with her mother. That girl's mother gave a gun to her and advised her to shoot that person whom she sees. Then I understood that they will kill me if I go for their help. So I continued to hide. Later a man came there and fired his gun many times on them. It was too late before I could take any action because that little girl and her mother were killed. When I went there, then that little girl's bag was moving. I got this dog after checking that bag. And we are with each other since that time. I could not save that little girl and her mother. 
but I am still taking care of their dog after their death. So this was the reason to build you, so that you may take care of the dog after my death. The next day, they set off their journey, on the other hand, we noticed Finch sleeping as he was very sick. Jeff was taking them to San Francisco. There it notices Finch's postcard which was sent by his dad. Nothing was written when he checks the remaining cards, he suddenly stops the bus when he notices a butterfly as it was surviving in the sunlight. Then he calls Finch to show him. When Finch places his hand in the sunlight he doesn't receive any harm. In fact, the ozone layer had been restored and extreme UV radiations receded. Finch comes outside and we see Jeff is very excited. Finch glimpses the sun and senses its rays and those two follow Finch. Finch was viewing that place very excitedly. At the same time he observes a butterfly landing on his hand. Later, Finch comes outside after wearing a suit. Finch says here, I am feeling very good and happy today. Then Jeff tells Finch I dreamt last night that we have moved to the Golden Gate Bridge. Finch is left astonished thinking how can the robots dream? But he feels good about his dream and asks Apology for calling him a machine. Then Jeff asks you had told me that those postcards had been given to you by your uncle. But there it is signed as dad, then Finch tells it the whole story. My father left me before my birth. And my father was actually an engineer. And that card was gifted to me on my birthday by my father. Actually, my father had invited me to meet him. I had purchased this suit to meet him. But I could not wear this suit till now. Then Jeff asks him about other cards. Finch tells it I kept them because I liked them very much as I wanted to wander the world, but I never visited anywhere except my city. Finch also tells here that it is a good experience for humans to stand on the Golden Gate Bridge. Then Jeff says to him, we will surely visit that place. But Finch says I cannot go because I am going to die. Jeff is dejected after hearing it. Finch says to it, give your words that you will take care of my dog after my death. Jeff says on it, sure, I will take care of it. After this, Finch asks Jeff to play with his dog. But that dog was playing with Finch, not with Jeff. It was giving the ball to Finch again and again. Seeing it, Jeff understands that dog does not like it. Finch says, don't worry. It will be adjusted with you gradually. After this, Finch vomits blood again and Jeff takes him onto the bus. Here Finch and Jeff embrace each other. When Finch gets into the bus, the dog also follows him and they begin to play with each other. On the other side, Jeff feels lonely and dejected. Later, Finch falls asleep on the bus and Jeff is engaged collecting the things which are outside. Finch's dog starts weeping at night and Jeff understands that his master has died. Jeff places Finch on a funeral pyre along with his UV suit. Now Jeff and the dog are very sad due to the death of Finch. The next day, Jeff thinks, what should I do? It remembers that it has to do the same task which was performed by Finch. It means that it has to feed the dog as Finch has done before. Later, that dog begins to play with Jeff. Due to this, Jeff feels very satisfied. It means that dog has learned to live with Jeff. The next day, they begin to move to San Francisco where they have to move to Golden Gate Bridge and finally, they reach their destination. According to the advice of Finch, Jeff starts to feel like humans at that place. Later Jeff discovers a note of a girl who is